Thank you for joining the Town of Newmarket election team. As an election official, you have an important job and today you will have the opportunity to learn about your duties and about the election process through this video and our interactive training sessions. But first, we will begin with a message from Newmarket's Town Clerk and Returning Officer, Andrew Brower. I'd like to welcome you to the Town of Newmarket's election official training. Today you will be provided with the training and knowledge you will need to be well prepared in assisting your community as they exercise their right to vote on October 27th. My role is to ensure there is confidence, transparency and accountability in our electoral process and you will play a large part in achieving that goal. Perhaps this election will be your first as an election official or perhaps you have worked in previous municipal elections. Either way, we want to thank you for offering your time, talent and energy to ensuring a smooth election process for all new market voters. Because you will be on the front lines, we welcome and encourage your feedback regarding the information provided and how we can improve upon this training in the future. Once again, thank you and we look forward to working with you on October 27th. Let's get started. Here's what we will learn today. We will briefly review Municipal Elections 101. Go through the general duties and responsibilities of being an election official. The hands-on training and reference materials will include more specific responsibilities. Review how to open the voting location. Learn about the role of scrutineers. Discuss how to assist all voters on election day and look at the new identification requirements. Finally, we will demonstrate how to close the voting location before moving on to the group breakout and role play section of today's training. Let's begin by reviewing the basics of this year's municipal election. There are eight days scheduled for regular advanced voting throughout the town of Newmarket. We will be using the Magna Center and the Ray 20 Recreation Complex as advanced voting locations. The Community Center will also be used during the Farmer's Market hours. These three locations will provide advanced voting opportunities during various times as shown on the calendar and will allow the community to vote anywhere with the option of choosing a location and time at their convenience. There are also advanced voting opportunities in multi-residential dwellings. If you are a new market voter, please vote at one of the advanced voting times as there will not be an opportunity to vote on voting day. So mark your calendars for the day that best suits your schedule. Voting day will be on Monday, October 27, 2014. The voting locations will be open from 10 a.m. until 8 p.m. You will need to report to your assigned location bright and early at 8 a.m. There are also voting locations established for retirement and nursing homes, as well as the hospital. You will be assigned your voting location prior to the election. Now that we know where to vote, we will look at who can vote. A qualified voter is anyone who is a Canadian citizen and at least 18 years old and a new market resident or an owner or tenant of property in new market or the spouse of an owner or tenant of property in new market and not restricted from voting by law. Remember, a voter can only vote once in new market and must vote in the ward where they reside. Each ward will have a council representative. Voters choose one name for mayor, one name for regional councillor, one name for ward councillor representing the ward in which the voter lives, and if qualified, one name for school trustee for one of the four school boards. A list of candidates is included in your reference materials. Now that we have reviewed the basics, let's move on to your role before and on voting day. There are seven things to do before voting day. Review your reference material so that you are familiar with all aspects of your position. Know your voting location and have a plan on how to get there. Plan to dress appropriately. It's a good idea to dress comfortably and in layers as the gyms and facilities are typically colder than other rooms. 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. is a long shift, so make sure to bring enough food and drink for the entire day. Ensure to bring medications with you. Remember that no peanut products are allowed in school facilities. Vote on advanced voting day as you will not have an opportunity to do so on October 27th. A list of dates and locations is available in your reference materials. Let us know if you have any special needs or accommodation requirements. Bring materials provided at your training session and report to your voting location manager who will provide any additional supplies. Before the voting locations open, you should 
please arrive at your voting location at 8 a.m. and report to your voting location manager who will provide your supplies. If you are ill, please call the election office immediately. On-call staff will be deployed in your place. The voting location manager, revision officer, deputy returning officer, poll clerk, and tabulator officer will set up the voting location. This entails arranging furniture, tables, chairs, placing election posters and directional arrows to ensure the flow into and out of the voting location is most efficient and barrier free. The voting location manager will be provided with the setup layout. Refer to your setup checklist and ensure you have all the items you will need for your area throughout the day, including your materials and reference placemat, which will have a step-by-step -step guide on how to handle all situations should you need to check it. Ensure any campaign materials, including signs, posters, and pamphlets are removed. Remember, the voting place includes the entire property, including the parking lot and boulevards. The customer service clerk and voting location manager will continue to monitor the voting location for campaign material throughout voting day. 30 minutes prior to opening the voting location, candidates and their appointed scrutineers are permitted to enter. They may view the ballots, election documents, witness the inspection of the vote tabulator stand, and they can also view the voters list during slow periods to keep their own records of who has voted. Scrutineers are appointed in writing by the candidate to observe the voting process. Candidates may appoint one scrutineer for every ballot issuing area or DRO located within the voting location. Candidates and scrutineers are welcome to view what is happening at the voting location. However, they are not permitted to be at the voting location at the same time. The scrutineers will show the DRO the appointment form, and then the DRO will administer the oral oath of secrecy at each ballot issuing area. The DRO will provide the scrutineer with identification for themselves while they're at the voting location. Scrutineers and candidates cannot attempt to directly or indirectly interfere with how an elector votes or who they vote for, handle ballots, and any election official's documents, or be in the vicinity of the vote tabulator at any time. Cell phones are not permitted to be used. For a full list of the do's and don'ts concerning scrutineers, please consult your reference materials. Now that you have set up the voting location and learned about the role of candidates and scrutineers, let's review the voting process itself. At 10 a.m. sharp, the voting location manager opens the voting location. When voters arrive, the customer service clerk will greet them and confirm if they have their identification and whether they have brought a voter notification card. The card will quickly assist the customer service clerk in determining if the voter is in the correct location. If the voter did not bring their voter notification card with them, then the customer service clerk can check if they are on the voters list and direct them to either the revision officer to assist the voter in adding their name or updating information, or to a DRO to issue their ballot. If the person is not on the voters list, they are directed to the revision officer and must show one piece of ID that includes their name and address. To have their name added to the voters list, the revision officer will assist the voter in completing an application to amend the voters list form and then direct the voter to a DRO. The DRO and poll clerk will work together to ensure the voter is registered and issued the correct ballot. If the person is on the voters list, they must show identification to the DRO before getting their ballot. The poll clerk will assist the DRO in finding their name on the list and will cross the voter off the list while the DRO issues the ballot. If they do not have identification, they must make a declaration of identity. If they are on the voters list with an asterisk beside their name, 
That means they completed the application to amend the voters list form online. Each DRO and poll clerk will have these forms, filed alphabetically by surname in their supplies. In this case, the voter presents their ID to the DRO and the poll clerk will provide the voter with a completed form to be signed before the DRO provides the ballot. There may also be instances when voters will need assistance or access to accessible voting options. A few general tips to keep in mind when providing assistance to voters of all abilities are ask how may I help you? Ensure the voting location is barrier free. Offer alternatives like a magnifying sheet, a chair, help of an election official, friend or interpreter when requested. Sit at eye level when speaking with a voter who's in a wheelchair. Avoid touching or leaning on or over someone's assistive device or pushing someone's wheelchair without their permission. Respect a voter's dignity and independence in every situation. A full review of assisting voters with accessibility needs is also provided in your reference materials. Once the ID and registration process is complete, the deputy returning officer will explain how to properly complete the ballot. The ballot is marked by filling in the oval space located next to the name of the candidate of their choice with a pen provided. Stress the importance of marking the ballot correctly. The DRO will initial the top of the ballot, explain how to insert the ballot into the secrecy folder after marking the ballot, and direct the voter to the voting screen to complete the ballot, then to the tabulator officer to cast the ballot. You may encounter situations such as lack of proper identification, voters leaving the voting place with their ballot, improperly marked ballots, and other scenarios that will require you to take extra steps. We will review these scenarios in the role-playing portion of today's training and in your reference materials. For now, a good rule of thumb to remember throughout the day would be, when in doubt, seek your voting location manager out. Consulting your voting location manager with questions is always welcome. You will continue to guide voters through the process until the end of voting day, which is 8 p.m. sharp. At 8 p.m., the voting location must be closed promptly by the voting location manager. Any voters remaining in the voting location may vote. The deputy returning officer and poll clerk will complete their paperwork and pack up all appropriate materials. The tabulator officer transfers the ballots to the ballot transfer boxes and seals the ballot boxes with DRO tape. Next, the tabulator officer prints two copies of the results tape from the vote tabulator and signs the certificate portions along with any candidates or scrutineers who are present and wish to sign. One copy is posted at the voting location. The tabulator officer will then pack up the tabulator and return it immediately to the municipal office. All election officials must complete their paperwork and return the supplies to the voting location manager. Ensure you refer to your closing checklist. Also, it is very important that you take the time to complete the feedback forms that have been provided to each of you. This can be done throughout the day when time permits or at the end of the day. These comments are invaluable in ensuring continuous improvement for the next election. Election officials will assist each other in disassembling of the polling station. After all of this is complete, your day and your duties are done. Checks will be mailed within a week of voting day. We've covered a lot of information in this video, which will be reviewed in your reference materials, as well as in the next section of the day, our breakout sessions and role-playing exercise. We thank you in advance for your contributions to this election, and for more information and to access this video and more, visit www.newmarket.ca slash vote 2014.